Thanks, Rikant. Hi, everyone. I know it's the end of the day, and energy must be at an all-time low. So I'll try and keep it crisp, and as Rikant said, spend about 20 minutes or so talking about a few trends, post which we can then get into our panel discussion and open it to question and answer. Well, everyone, where were the presentations? Here it goes. Everyone is trying the bit to own a space in consumers' heart and mind, right? That's why all of us marketeers are here. That's what we do for a living. And to my mind, even he knows that. Even Jesus knows that the consumer is changing. And the reason I say that is his something outside a church in the U.S. which says, St. Giles Church, you have one new friend request from Jesus, confirm or ignore. A live shot in a church in the U.S. So things obviously are changing. Some trends, and I'll briefly walk you through them, post which I'd rather focus on one particular trend because it wouldn't be prudent to try and do justice to everything in the space of 20 minutes. We wouldn't end up discussing anything at great length. To my mind, there's been a big change of late. We used to say, at one point in time, kids used to be kids. That's history. Then kids used to be influencers. That's history as well. Today, kids are rapidly becoming consultants. Consultants to parents. And the reason I say that is because parents like myself, who are not that technology savvy, today look at their kids to go online to tell us about the latest gadgets, to tell us about the latest cars, the horse bars, go read online reviews, speak with and chat with friends around the world, and then come back and literally advise parents on what to buy. And to that extent, kids are not just influencers, kids are rapidly becoming consultants in their own right. Consumers clearly are now spending far more than what was traditionally called as the core of the plate. So as disposable incomes rise, while the way we consume basic communities pretty much remains the same, a lot of spending is now going towards expanding the periphery of the plate. And that's why certain sectors like health, travel, food, and education and insurance are now seeing a dramatic shift in the way India consumes these sectors. And to that extent, I think there will be a lot of growth in these sectors and there will be a lot of different ways of reaching to consumers in these sectors. Thirdly, at our parents' generation, and definitely even for a part of our own, normally expensive was taboo, because if it's very expensive, it's only for the super rich. Today, there is no concept of expensive, whether it's a category like confectionery or whether you're trading into a very high-end luxury good. Because as long as it has got perceived value, it is fine. You can sell a hundred buck pocket of confectionery today, where it was absolutely impossible to even dream of doing something like that even five years ago. And lastly, to my mind, technology has invaded our life so much that of late, there is trend of what I hear of being offered vacations which are digital downtime vacations. So you will be offered to go to a place where you won't have a television, you wouldn't be allowed to carry your mobile or your laptop so that you can genuinely have some downtime to yourself. And that is what technology is doing to our lives. As I mentioned before, it's not possible to really get into and dwell into each of these topics. And so for the next 20 minutes, I'm going to focus largely on sharing a few examples on the technology space, because I personally believe that's one area where we as marketeers are still struggling. And so I just want to spend some time on that. Some data. I'm a confectionery guy, so some data to chew on. Basis, IRS, already the net, is a large part of our time as the youth. We are spending almost 78 minutes a day on the net, already the number two after television and growing and exploding. Social media doubling in 2012, that's the estimate of 45 million users. 40 million users going online and reading reviews before making purchase decisions. That doesn't mean that they're purchasing online, but they're going online to read reviews before they purchase either online or offline. That's the power 
of what digital is doing to the whole consumer mind space. And numbers tell stories, stuff that you may have known before. 13 hours, amount of videos uploaded on YouTube every single minute. 412 years is the length of time it would take any one of us to see every YouTube as of last month. And this number would have already gone up already, given the fact that so much is getting uploaded every single minute. 100 million, number of YouTube videos viewed per day on a global level. 30 million articles available on Wikipedia, something that is now becoming a source of information for students around the world, is being quoted in universities. And 3 million tweets every single day. And as a result, while we can go on and on about data, the big question as marketeers is what are we going to do about it? Traditional marketing, the consumer used to interface with us one way. So we as marketeers used to design the product, the packaging and so on and so forth and it was a one way street and the consumer used to interface us the way we liked her to interface with us. No longer to my mind. And we need to involve the consumer more and as a result he or she now needs to be a part of the entire funnel right to the core of the peel. And digital is changing how marketers need to communicate with their consumers. So instead of just being on offline, the question is we can theoretically use consumers to market to consumers, right? Whether it's word of mouth, blogs, Facebook and so on. The big challenge that I think we all face is that's easier said than done. And so where do we go? In the next 10 minutes or so, I just want to talk about a few examples that I've seen from around the world, which I think is worth sharing in this forum, as food for thought. First, as marketers, we need to deliver value. And we are lucky if we can land a product innovation which in itself is so dramatic that you don't need to do anything else. For example, if the product is as great as Google, which in itself is a brand, it doesn't need to market it half as much as anybody else. Or if there's a single new product from Apple, it doesn't need to market itself. There are people queuing up, there are people writing about it, there are blogs on it, and you don't need to market if you have a phenomenal product from a track record of a company that delivers phenomenal products. Or even if you were not in a very technologically advanced organization. I don't know if many of you know this, but there was an, adverti an advertisement from Queensland Tourism about looking for an island caretaker. Hamilton Island, Australia, they advertised just once, saying, we want someone to come and take care of this lovely island for six months. And what happened after that was unbelievable. There were millions and millions of videos that went online. There were unbelievable number of blogs and so on and so forth for people wanting to apply to get this job. Arguably valued at 100 million US dollar media coverage from one simple piece of very creative cutting edge work. All this for products that were pretty cool. Technology, islands, stuff that most FMCG players like myself can't dream of doing. So what do you do if your product is not cool? Some thoughts. Can we use content? And I'd like to play one video of what can content do. Here's a gentleman who is apparently the CEO of this firm who markets blenders. So what can you do as a blender which will be so unique in positioning, which will go online and deliver you the kind of mileage that you want it to do? in today's world. And I'll play a video as to what this gentleman did. Will it blend? That is the question. I love my new iPad. 
It does a ton of cool things. But will it blend? That is the question. Doesn't quite fit in the jar, but I can take care of that. No! I knew I could get the iPad in the Blendtec Total Blender. I think I'll press the iBlend button. Don't breathe this. Ah, that was one tough path. Visit bulletblend.com. This guy has made a reputation of blending anything. His site has got 143 million views. Companies are now paying him money, as in formal companies are paying him money for him to go and blend it and put it up out there. And that's for a blender which just says, that's his USB, will it blend? So that's how a normal guy can use digital in the most amazing way to reach to its consumers. Uh, for lack of time, I wouldn't play this for the moment, but I'd like you to go back if you have time to go and see something which Volkswagen did very successfully in Germany. They created this guy. For a long time, it wasn't um, revealed that this was being sponsored by Volkswagen. About someone who is single and he wants to find a date or find a partner, the only way he can do that is to have a fancy car. He doesn't have a driver's license, and they have then created a whole history of online, offline, television, press stuff as to how whole of Germany follows this guy to find the ideal car and a driving license so he can find a date. One of the most successful blogs ever run in Germany. Uh, it was the number one blog in Germany. The other thing that we would need to do as marketers is to create engagement. Um, Skittles did some amazing stuff in the US of late. It's a confectionery brand. And they created stuff where you could they would go and translate your Facebook status into a video and post it on your wall. Again, something they did extremely well from a confectionery brand, which doesn't really have a significant online share of consumption. My favorite, something that some of you may have seen, is what Coke did to create engagement. A hardcore FMCG brand, how did they do something which traveled the world online? Something done in a university. <laughs> 